Hi and uh, welcome back to Tony's workshop. I'm still trying to build his tank. Um, right, so when I left off last time, I was going to start building the track, um, which I've done on one side. I've completed that. I've I've done it up to uh, I think it's 94 uh, segments, although Armatech recommend 96. And so what I've done is I've just uh, gone ahead and installed a track on the wheels and the sprocket and just to make sure that everything's, I mean this is elevated so some of these wheels are not touching the ground but everything seems to be moving as it should do all lined up very very pleased with that and so now I'm just going to start building the track for the opposite side and I thought I would um, talk you through uh, the technique that I've come up with for doing that and when I've done that I'm going to take, I'll put the, I'll, I'll, I'll mount the, this track on the other side uh, and do exactly the same thing just to test the, run, the running of it um, and then when I've got that set I'll take the tracks off and then I'm going to paint them with a, a dark grey uh, matte uh, spray um, I won't cover them completely I just want them to look a little bit more uh, road worked if you like um, and then if I get the paint on the the main track and then over time it will wear off these these blades here and it will look a bit more authentic but I think um, it just looks too new uh, so that's that I'm going to uh, set the camera up now and start doing some of these and I'll talk you through that in um, very shortly so uh, I'll be back shortly thanks very much right so we're all set up um, so you're gonna need uh, your bag of track pins which are these here you're gonna need your split pins and your M3 washers you're going to need a small set of thin nose pliers these are a modeling set quite handy and uh, a very good sharp cutter and i'll tell you why in a moment so and then you're going to need to have your your track parts to hand and i tend to do uh i, I tend to put four on at a time and i'll I'll, again I'm, I mean look, I haven't actually seen anybody do any of these online bit by bit so it's kind of um, I'd suggest that you find your own way of doing it and your own comfort of doing it so simply um, position the, the track segments as as simple as that to make sure they all follow that now I noticed and I'll probably get shot for this by the advanced builders but I noticed that some of these tracks have got um, like a a one and a two but I've studied it high and low and I don't think it really matters I mean and they if they were if it mattered it would, they'd be bagged separately surely and there's no mention of it in the armor track armor tech instructions and they they seem to be exactly the same but I guess if you're if you're that kind of builder that just wants to follow that, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to go through, you know, nearly 200 pieces of track to separate them out between one and two. And I've built this uh, piece here uh, reasonably well without having um, to worry too much. So, so as you sort of thought now, uh, before we go into that, so basically the the track pin itself is this, and I don't know if you can focus on that, but there's a tiny little hole on the end of that. This slides through the hole put a, an M3 washer over it and then the split pin goes through the hole now it, that's that's easy but and then obviously once we've got it in position we'll we'll bend these split pins and then I'll show you I have to I've, I've discovered that I I need to cut them to make them fold round to a neat bend as it suggests right so these pins simply go I'm just going to position that tank a little bit further away to give me a bit more room. Gosh, it's heavy now. So that's gone in there. Three more pins. Now, some of these go in beautifully. Most of them do, actually. Just slide in really smoothly. But a few of them because of the man manufacturing issues or machining don't tend to they tend to be a bit tight so what i've been done with those is i've just taken them out and put another segment in until i find a segment that um that uh, 
works for me. Then I simply just I'm just going to turn the pins so that I can have all the holes facing up upwards. And then I'm using <laughs> my big old sausage fingers to do this, but you know I'm I'm sort of way past over a hundred of these now, so I've kind of got a, a technique going. Having said that, I'll probably fumble now. I've got the camera on, but that's the work. That's the first washer in. Split, split pin in. I'm not going to do anything with that other than just position that. I'm not ready to do anything other than just. Obviously, I hold the pin this side to prevent it being pushed back when you're trying to put the washer on. I guess you could do this more surgically with the right, you know, it's sort of sort of watchmaker tools or whatever. But I'm, I found it quite. I, I touch and feel, so I can actually feel with my thumb where this washer needs to be positioned. Hope you can see this clearly enough. I'm sort of zoomed in as much as I can. And uh, I've just got home from work and I just wanted to get this bit done because uh, after having such foul weather over here in the UK for so long, looks like we might have a dry day on Saturday. And I want to get these tracks outside laid out uh, because, you know, you can imagine when they're on, when they're, they're, when they're sort of fully laid out and not attached to the tank, they're a long old piece to try and paint. So... That's the four of those set and ready. So what I do then is I just turn this up. It's it's it stands up on its own. Just adjust the camera. It stands up on its own weight, and if it if it wants to fall down, all I do is I just I turn it so it has more form, and it's fairly safe. So I don't know if you can see now we've got these pins all here. Now I'd started off trying to wear gloves, but the problem is the gloves um, get in the way. So I use barrier cream. So I just completely covered my hands in barrier cream. Um, and just be careful. I found that the best way of doing this is to split the pin initially. Here we go. Just because the camera's on that, it's going to be awkward, of course. Just get the thing moving. Classic. Okay. So that's it starting to bend. It's easy to bend. It's just a bit awkward. So I just get the first bend on. I don't know if you can see that. And I'll go on and carry on. Now that one will not come out. There we go. That one's easier. Just be careful you don't prick yourself in the finger. You may want to use, I mean, if you're more adept with using smaller sort of um, watchmaking tools, you might want to use them instead. But I, th I think that touch and feel when dealing with something like this is a lot, lot, a lot better. We'll, of course, be using the pliers very shortly. But I just want to get that initial bend on the split pin. That's, that's that. Now, obviously can't leave them like that because they're too long and they will they'll bind and and, and uh, cause interference with the track so what I've been doing is I just use my snips and I take off about two-thirds of what's left it's longer on one side than the other of course so just try and make them even Just enough to hold it in, hold it secure, and also allow us to, you know, physically bend these tiny little split pins around into position. And then I use my, I'll start this end. I use my thin nose pliers, and just holding. Probably going to get in the way of the camera here, but. It's gone around nicely, and just turn that. So I use the, I try and use the 
the actual loop of the split pin. It is jolly awkward, but there you go. There's I'll just fold that round. There we go. And that's the first one. I'll see if I can just move the camera so you can you can see. So that's the first one done. And then I'm going to go on and do the others. And they'll all end up looking more or less the same. It's a fairly tedious, monotonous job. But if you've got nothing else better to do um, on a wet and cold winter's evening um, and as sod all on the telly, um, then this is a, a good way of keep, keep myself out of trouble. I only spend a couple of hours. If I get home at a reasonable time today, I've got home at a reasonable time. So I spend a couple of hours just... It's actually a really nice way of unwinding. I have a fairly stressful job. And I'll find that uh, coming in here to my workshop and doing something like this and just seeing the progress of it um, on a on a day by day basis, it's it's really quite comforting. And to think that when I started off doing this, I was absolutely petrified about the whole process and really concerned that I'd taken on something that was uh, beyond me. But um, the more I've got into this, the more I've become quite attached to this process and um, and and the time that I am spend the more time I'm spending with this uh, tank the more I'm beginning to think uh, of ideas how I think it's going to look when it's finished and I think that's what you'll find again so that's so that's that they're done I'll put them back put this back down now and we'll go again the only thing I'd say as well is um, I mark these when I get to a particular stage so I've got, I know I was at 40 here, so that's 40, so I know that there's 40 because you, know, you, you can lose count and what I don't want to do is under, you know, I want to make them the same. Now I may, I may end up um, taking a track or a piece out of this, a segment out of this track um, uh, once, and, and it, does, it does demonstrate how the idler wheel works quite well and I will do that uh, once I've finished the tracks and I'll show you how you adjust it and how it all kind of works really smartly actually and again i'll just say that the quality of the build of these things of armateca is ph phenomenal um so i'm gonna um i'm gonna carry on with this um and what i'll do is every time i get to another 20 so when i get to 60 i'll mark that as well it's also a, a good way of if you like uh it's sort of helping you through the process so um, i'm gonna carry this on and um, you're more than welcome to watch and i'm gonna ask my amazing son to to speed the process up you are going to run out of room for this so what I do is I just tend to run this up like that and then the only difference is when I need to turn it on its side it's just it makes it easier because that stands up it's not doing anything so that's that's perfect so I'm going to carry on and I'm going to see if my, my son will speed this up for me
So that's this side complete. I've got 94 links in this side to match the 94 links in on this side. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is to test fit this track on the other side of the tank. And as long as all goes well with that, I'll uh, do the same thing here. I'll just here is I've just put a bit of masking tape on this here to to, to identify the temporary link um, pin that I put into this. So that's where I'm going to be cutting to release the pin and uh, remove the track uh, for painting. So just during the course of uh, putting this together, it is a, a sort of a somewhat tedious um, and time-consuming process. But you know, uh, again, if you've got the music on in the background, it's, it's and you get into a rhythm, it's quite good. The only thing is, um, I would suggest you know a very good pair of cutters uh, so you can trim the uh, the little pins. Uh, if you try and um, if you try and uh, try and just bend these as they currently are, they're too long, so you do need to trim them to be able to get that neat fold either side of the pin. Um, so with uh, when you're doing that, obviously wear goggles because these tend to flick, uh, ping off. Um, and then just a, a very small pair of uh, pliers, pin nose, you know, pins of sort of thin nose pliers. Um, and a little bit of patience and you'll you'll get there and as I said I, I, I tend to, to, to sort of mark the track when I've got into sort of 20 60 80 and then got to the 94 so I know that's where I am so that's that's uh, just some tips and then so once these tracks are um, test fitted and I've removed them from the tank I'm going to lay them down on, on my garage floor and I'm going to give them a coat of sort of dark grey anthracite uh, car paint just to take this sort of new look off both sides I'm not co I'm not going to cover them completely I just want to get that kind of you know it's, you know some elements of it just looking darker than it is and then once it's painted and it starts rolling properly the paint will wear off these these blades here and um, hopefully be much more realistic look but um, so I'm now going to um, test fit the other side and I'll set the camera up so you can see how I do that Right, so I've elevated the jack, with the jack I've elevated the tank up, um, enough room for me to be able to slide the track underneath. Now again, listen, I, I, this is not how they tell you to do it, but this is how I've worked out to do it. Um, so as long as the, the, the tank is elevated enough, um, I just slide this underneath, letting it overhang the bench the other side. I locate that on the sprocket. And then just making sure just and that's it so that's the track on as such and what I do now is I'm going to lower the um, the jack down to allow me to link these two together and, and ahead of this I've got my my linking bar washer and a pin ready to go I'm just gonna pop that there stop that from spinning off because the, the sprocket will will drive it over so now what I want is I want to take I want to take all the slack off of this. So I'm going to just drop the jack down. Taking up the slack. sure that the wheels are situated where they should be awkward to do this on your own but this is the technique that I've come up with so I'm just gonna pull that slack Going to go anywhere now. I just need to 
take that a little bit actually. <laughs> slack up and then move that round holding the end of the track that that's nicely together take the pin and slide that through into position so so that's that in as a temporary just here um, and I'm just going to pop that washer on there and pin just use the pliers to rotate that round so I can get the pin in it. I'm putting the pin in the wrong way around so that I know which is the right one. Classic. Again, when the camera's on, I'm all fingers and thumbs. Don't know why. But anyway. So that's just temporary. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to elevate this up again. Using a ratchet is definitely a better way to do this rather than the jack supplied socket that comes with it. So that's it. It's elevated enough just for me to make sure that the tank we're all moving as they should. And I'm just going to double check. I've got the same tension set for both sides just by adjusting the. It's like now, I guess, is when we need to use. The alum key to adjust I've taken off the cover at the back of this so I can get in and do this we'd help if I got the right size wouldn't it anyway okay and I, when I was doing the idly wheel, I, I, I was thinking it's so slack, it's so loose. But again, just looking at research that I've done on on YouTube, it seems that this is uh, it. Does definitely tenses up, and I can see that the 
why the wheel is moving and that might be a bit too tense but we'll see um, um the good thing is i can adjust this by either using the back here and adjusting the idler arm uh, or adding or taking away another piece of track but i guess once i get it off the jack and do a bit of a rolling road test on it um, i'll have a better idea of, of, of whether or not i need to to do that but i'm going to now show you if i drop this down Although the jack is still underneath this. You'll see that there it becomes a lot slacker once it's almost all the weights on the deck. Although it's sitting on the jack, I can see that it's starting to. And there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of slack in that still. So the weight seems to be right. All the wheels seem to be moving as they should. So I'm quite I'm quite happy with that. So the next step for me now is to remove the tracks. Um, and uh, take them off ready for painting. And then I'm gonna start looking at rubbing the side of the tank down, fronts down, ready for painting, this bit. I've put the deck on as a temporary so I can just mask this area off because unlike other builders, I'm not painting the inside of the tank. Um, I, I, I just personally don't see a reason for it. It's per personal preference, but I'm not doing it. And then once I've got this all masked up, I'm going to, and when I've assembled and added some of the detailing on here and on the front here, um, I'm going to then prepare this prime paint up to this point here. Um, I'm going to, once I've painted the tracks, I won't put them back on just yet. I'll leave them off, the, off while I do all this work, build up the mud guards and all the rest of it. And then I guess the next step, once this is done, I'll have to take the tank off the bench and uh, start working uh, on the the top section and the turret and everything else how i'm going to get this off uh, is by using a table lift um, which i'll park up next to this roll the tank onto it and then lower it down and move it out of the way but i'll, I'll cover that off on another film so my next step is getting these tracks off um, getting them painted and then we'll we'll we'll, we'll sort of carry on so Basically, to uh, to remove the track, I'm going to just bring this round. Again, I've just masked the, the the item that or the area that I want to um, remove the pin. This is the pin I deliberately put upside down, so I knew it was the one that temporary. And um, really, the best way to do it is bring the bring this back to the point of the rear of the tank, so you can get you can actually get access to it. I put the pin in and remove the pin. So having not done this before, I'm hoping that I can simply. Cut the pin, uh, cut the split pin. Uh, I've got safety glasses on, which are also uh, plus twos. So if you don't need to wear glasses and you're very lucky, you've got great eyesight. Still, I recommend wearing safety goggles because when you cut these, so that's that. Just pop that off there I'm going to use my pliers to push that pin through pull it out this end and hold on to this because it will go very quickly like that so that's it so I'm going to carefully just remove that track And then away from the tank and that couldn't be simpler could it so i'm going to do the other side now um, and then i'm going to lay a sheet out in on my garage floor 
lay these tracks out. I'm going to do both sides. Um, I'm also going to do all the spare ones, which are the ones that sit around the top of the turret as the spare track. So um, I'm going to use a, a dark grey anthracite um, matte finish paint. And, and I'm not going to go over the top with it. I'm not even going to prime it because I want them to be... I want the metal to come through at some point um, and I don't want them to be perfectly um, the same finish throughout. So I'm going to be quite um, liberal uh, and, and 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 sort of be a bit, try and be a bit more artistic when I do this rather than trying to get a full coat of paint as I've been doing on these. So I'm not going to bubble with primer. I'm just going to go probably two coats of this. But um, I may film that actually because there's not a lot of paint going to be flying around. So that's it tracks are off i'm going to do the other side now and um and then we'll we'll carry on right okay so i've uh, i've painted the tracks i've just um given them a sort of a wash really because i don't want them to be covered in completely so i think once these are on the tank um they'll look pretty good uh, i've taken them outside it was a dry day but quite windy uh, had a bit of a problem with the tech on the camera, but anyway, so I just put a couple of dust sheets out uh, Potted them down as you can see with pots of paint um, And I've also painted the the spare Tracks as well which go around the turret So I'm gonna roll these up now once they're dry put them to one side and then carry on doing some more work to the top hole as previously said <laughs> 